All of you, whether left home or at home, should carefully investigate those two lines. What stops when the mind stops is emotion and love that stop. When thinking ceases, there aren't even thoughts of them anymore. That is real wealth and honor. And if you can get rid of private desires, that is the true field of blessings. Private desires refers to the thoughts of desires you don't tell people about because you feel they are very ugly and yet you don't cut them off. It's just them and if you get rid of them, you obtain the true field of blessings. I'm always telling you, when the mind is somebody, the demons are subdued and every day is happy. If your mind is not in somebody, the demons won't be subdued, but if it is, they will be. When the Buddha was about to achieve Buddhahood, beautiful goddesses appeared before him to seduce him, but he didn't move. That's what's meant by the mind being in Samadhi. The demon have no way to get a jail then. They can exhaust their resources of drama of treasures and powers of spiritual penetrations, but it won't do any good. There isn't, then there isn't any day which isn't a happy day. When false thoughts do not arise, then every place is peaceful. If you don't have any false thinking, any place you go is just the land of ultimate bliss. Why do you feel here isn't good and there isn't good, nor is elsewhere any good either, so that the entire world is the, the uninterrupted hell wherever you go? It's because you have too much false thinking, but if you don't give rise to false thoughts, then every place is peaceful and happy, as it is said, one moment pure, one moment on virtual peak, at all times pure, at all times on virtual peak. If your mind is pure on one time, then you'll be on virtual peak one time. If your mind is always pure, then you're always on virtual peak. Then why don't you feel happy or at peace? It's because you think, ah, this body of mine, I should take good care of it. I should sleep in a good place, eat better, and be more comfortable in every way. I remember that when I was in Yunmen and was taking my leave of the Venerable Master Yu Su Yin to go to Hong Kong. I said, Venerable Master, I can't take leave here in Yunmen. What can't you take? He asked. He, I said, the humidity is intense in the room where I've been staying and is somewhat unbearable for me. What do you think the Venerable Master replied? He said, so you find it unbearable to let people sleep in pig pens? How would you say they can stand it? I said, Venerable Master, how can you compare us people to pigs? He said, people are pig. I said, I'm going to Hong Kong, and when the weather is drier, I'm, I'll come back. He said, you'll come back if you go, you won't be able to come back. I said, I shall certainly come back. You certainly won't be able to come back, was his reply. I said, well, if I can't come back, then I stay in Hong Kong. Then stay there, he said. As it turned out, when I go to Hong Kong and wanted to go back, I really couldn't go back because Guangzhou had become occupied and the frontiers were closed and communi communications cut off. And since I was from another province and didn't understand Cantonese, I was really at a loss. People would say the most ordinary words and I wouldn't understand any of it. It was just the same as during the trip I had made to Japan in the course of staying at Nanhua Monastery. The Cantonese would make the same sounds, but I didn't have the faintest idea what they meant. And since I couldn't return to Yunnan, I remained in Hong Kong. Where are we in the Sutra text? The Bodhisattvas have left confusion and inversion, and the purity of their minds is continuous. They cleverly, with powers of spiritual penetrations, cross over living beings without limit. That includes you and me as well. Sutra Those not yet peaceful, they make peaceful, and to the peaceful they show the way place. In that way, they pervade the drama realm, yet their minds have no attachment. They do not dwell in the limit of reality. 
nor do they enter into nirvana. In that way, they pervade the world and enlighten the flocks of beings. Dramas number and all living beings number. They completely know and yet are not attached to. They universally rain down the rain of drama, imply moistening all in the world. Universally inside of all worlds, they accomplish right enlightenment in thought after thought, yet still cultivate the Bodhisattva conduct and never do they ever retreat. Commentary, those living beings who have not yet become peaceful, they make peaceful, and to the beings who have already been made peaceful, they point out and show the way place. In that way, they pervade the drama realm, yet their minds have no attachment. They do not dwell in the limit of reality, nor do they enter into nirvana. They neither dwell in true suchness nor in birth and death. They dwell neither in afflictions nor in body. They do not dwell anywhere. You should produce that thought which does not dwell anywhere. In that way, they pervade the world and enlighten the flocks of beings. Dramas number and all living beings number they completely know and yet are not attached to. They are like, they are not like us who completely do not know and yet are attached. That's where the difference lies. When the Buddhas teach and transform living beings, they universally rain down the rain of drama. That means they are always proclaiming all drama doors and turning the great wheel of drama, imply moistening all the sentient beings in the world. Furthermore, universally inside of all worlds, in every instant of thought is a time when they, the Buddhas, accomplish right enlightenment. Yet it took cultivation of the Bodhisattva conduct to reach that point, and even then, they still cultivate the Bodhisattva conduct, and never do they ever retreat. In order to accomplish unsurpassed, proper, and equal right enlightenment, one absolutely cannot retreat, and then one can certify through Buddhahood. Sutra All the various bodies in the world are all completely understood and known in that way, knowing drama of bodies. They then obtain all Buddha's bodies. They universally know all living beings, all compass along with all shetras, in the ten directions without any limits. There is nothing which does not enter their wisdom sea. There is no limit through the bodies of living beings, and they manifest bodies for each one. The Buddha's body which has no bounds, the wise ones can all contemplate and see. All that is known in one thought, of thus come one's appearances in walls, passing through the meatless compass, could not be extolled to the end. Commentary All the various bodies of living beings in the world are all completely understood and known to the Bodhisattvas. Why do they want to know about the bodies of living beings? It's because in that way, knowing drama of bodies, they can understand the, the operation of cause and effect in beings coming to have the kinds of bodies they have. For example, why are cats cats and why are mice mice? Cats are cats because when they were people, they just wanted to do what cats do, so they become cats. When dogs were people, they just wanted to act like dogs, so they become dogs. This holds true for sheep cattle and pigs. When they were people, they didn't do a good job of being human and acted like beasts instead, so they ended up becoming beasts. If we do a good job of being people and cultivate well, then we can become Buddhas, since they understand the workings of cause and effect and repayment in kind. They then obtain all Buddha's bodies. Understanding the bodies of all living beings is itself Understanding the Buddha's body, and understanding the Buddha's body means future attainment of Buddhahood. They universally know all living beings with all the, the intricacies of their interwoven causes and retributions. All compass, whether those compass are long, short, great, or small, along with all shetras, shetra lands, in the ten directions without any limits, there's no border or confining limit to the world systems of the ten directions. 
There in nothing which does not enter their wisdom sea, because they have great wisdom, they can enter the sea of wisdom. There is no limit to the bodies of living beings, and in order to teach and transform living beings, they, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, manifest bodies for the sake of each one of those beings. They employ the four dharma of conversion. The four dharmas of conversion, giving kind words, beneficial conduct, similarity in deeds. The Buddha's body which has no bounds, there are states which only the wise ones, people with great wisdom, can all contemplate and see. All that is known in one single instant of thought, of thus common appearances in walls, if one were to continue speaking of them, passing through the midless compass, even in that long a time, they could not be stopped to the end. One could never finish praising the Buddhas. Sutra, the bodies which all Buddhas can manifest in every location achieve Paranivana. In the single thought, they are limitless and their Shariras are each different. In that way, in the times of the future, there will be those who seek the Buddha fruition. The ones of decisive wisdom can completely know those resolves for Buddhi which are limitless. In that way, in the three builders of time, all of the thus commons therein can each one be totally known, thus called dwelling in universal with his conduct. In that way, discriminately knowing the limitless conducts and grounds, they enter the location of wisdom, and their will never retreats. With subtle, wonderful, vast, and great wisdom, they deeply enter the third common state, and having entered, they do not retreat. That is called universal worthy wisdom. All the most supremely honored ones universally enter the third common state, cultivate, and do not retreat, and achieve unsurpassed body. Minds without limit, without bounds, karma which for each is not the same or accumulate because of thought which they literally and completely know, the defined and the non-defined, minds of study and minds beyond study, or of the ineffably many minds, in thought after thought they completely know. Bodhisattvas comprehend that those minds are neither one nor dual, not defined and not pure as well, that they also are not mixed up or confused and that all rises out of my own thoughts. In that way, Bodhisattvas completely, clearly see that from all the many living beings, minds and thoughts each not the same, there arise there the many kinds of worlds. Using such experience as these, and cultivating the most supreme conducts, they are transformationally born from the Buddha's Dharma, and obtain the name Universal Worthy. Commentary, the bodies which all Buddhas can manifest in every location achieve Parinibbana. That is, they make the, their bodies appear in every position, uh, possible location, and in all those locations, they enter Parinibbana. In a single thought, they are limitless. In the space of one thought, there is a limitless, and the limitless is within a single thought, and their Shariras are each different. When the Buddhas achieve Paranivana and their bodily remains are burned, the Shariras thus obtained are all different from each other. In that way, in the times of the future, there will be those who seek the Buddha fusion. There will be living beings in the future who, because they know there is a Buddha fusion which can be certified to, will diligently seek the Buddha fruit. The ones of decisive wisdom can completely know those resolves for Buddhi which are limitless. The Bodhisattvas can know them all completely with the decisive wisdom which they have. In that way, in the three periods of time, all those commons therein can each one be totally known. The Bodhisattvas are able to know all the first commons that's called dwelling in universal with his conduct the great conduct practiced by universal worthy bodhisattva. In that way, discriminately knowing, right within non-discrimination, being able to know in discriminated detail the limitless conducts and grounds, 
all the limiting stones of practice and the positions of the grounds which one obtains by cultivating them. They enter the location of wisdom and their will never retreats. They constantly turn the irreversible Dharma wheel. With such a wonderful, vast and great wisdom, they are able to deeply enter and observe the first common state. And having entered into the Buddha state, they do not retreat. They attain the three types of non-retreat. Non-retreat in thought, non-retreat in position, non-retreat in practice. That is called universal worthy wisdom, the wisdom obtained by universal worthy Bodhisattva. All the most supremely honored ones, all Buddhas, universally enter the first common state, cultivate and do not retreat and achieve unsurpassed body enlightenment. Minds without limit, without bounds on the part of living beings as they give rise to delusion, create karma which for each is not the same and undergo the corresponding retribution or accumulate because of thought. Why do living beings give rise to delusions, create karma and undergo retribution? It all happens because of false thinking. All the mountains, the great earth and everything to the ends of empty space and the drama realm come into being due to false thoughts of living beings. This is what the Bodhisattva slavery and completely know. The Bodhisattva can know all of those states very equally and impartially. The defined minds of living beings are those of love and emotion, and the non-defined minds are the body mind. The position of hardship through the third fruit are com collectively called positions of study or minds of study, for there is still learning. The fourth fruit of hardship is called the position of no study, and is also termed minds beyond study. All of the ineffably, ineffably, inconceivably many minds that living beings have in thought after thought, they, the Bodhisattvas, all understand and completely know. Bodhisattvas comprehend that those minds are neither one nor dual. The Bodhisattvas don't just know this for one or two living beings, but for any living being whatsoever. In fact, they know there is neither unity nor duality with regard to them and that the minds are not divided and not pure as well. They are neither divided nor pure, neither deep nor shallow. The Bodhisattvas also know that they also are not mixed up or confused, but all in very regular order, and that all arises from out of my own thoughts. The Bodhisattvas know there is nothing which is not produced from thoughts of people's minds. In that way, Bodhisattvas completely clearly see that from all the many living beings' minds and thoughts each not the same, there arise the many kinds of wars. The Bodhisattvas see this thus, realizing that past thought cannot be goat, present thought cannot be goat, future thought cannot be goat, yet even though they cannot be goat, they still very clearly know about all of those various kinds of thoughts and minds, which is to know all the states of living beings. And the reason that worlds are different is that the false thoughts in the minds of living beings are not the same. Using such experience as these, and cultivating the most supreme conduct, the most victorious Dharma doors, they are transformationally born from the Buddha's Dharma, that is, they are born from the Buddha's mouth, transformationally born from Dharma, and obtain the name universally worthy. They come to have the name universal worthy Bodhisattva. Sutra, living beings all falsely arise, the good and evil destinies all are from thought, because of it there may be rebirth in the heavens, or there may be falling to their house. The Bodhisattvas contemplate the worlds as arising from false thinking and karma. Because the false thinking has no bounds, walls are too, too are also limitless. All of the many lands and countries appear from the network of thinking. Through expedient means this network of illusion can be totally entered in a single thought. 
eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind faculties are also like that. The walls are different because thinking differs. Can all through sameness be entered? Each and every single state of vision can be entered by the meatless eye organs with their various kinds of natures which are different. The meatless and inevitably many. Yet what is seen does not have any difference and is furthermore not jumbled or confused in each according to individual karma. The corresponding retribution is undergone. Universal worthy with the meatless power completely knows them all in detail in each and every single state of vision through great wisdom can totally be entered in that way all in the various world systems can totally be known in detail what is more in cultivation of each and every conduct there is also never any retreat speaking of buddhas and speaking of living beings as well as speaking of all countries and speaking that way in the three periods of time in their differences can totally be known. The future present in the past, the present present in the future, the present present in the future, all three periods of time are reciprocally seen, yet every single one of them is clear. In that way, they are limitless kinds to enlighten those in the world. The skillful experience of all wisdom have no boundaries which can be obtained. Commentary Living beings all falsely arise. They are produced from false thinking. One single thought of falseness creates the many different worlds, and the good and evil destinies all are from thought. Having a wholesome thought generates a wholesome reward, but having an evil thought leads to undergoing an evil retribution. All the destinies which beings flow and turn in are brought about because of false thinking. Because of it false thinking, there may be one thought of good, which leads to rebirth in the heavens, or there may be evil false thinking, which occasions the evil retributions of falling to the house. The heavens and the house are not prepared for you by other people. You create them yourself by habitually saturation of karma and the retribution it entails. The Bodhisattvas contemplate the worlds and all worldly dramas as arising from discriminating false thinking and creation of karma on the part of living beings. Because the false thinking has no bounds, take a look at your own false thoughts. Is there any end to them? No. And therefore, worlds too are also limitless. World systems are just as infinite as the false thoughts. All of the many lands and countries that exist or appear from the network of thinking. Through expedient means, the understanding that it is all false and empty, this network of illusion can be totally entered in one thought. With the kind of great wisdom that universal worthy Bodhisattva has, all of these principles can be understood in the space of just one thought. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind faculties are also like that. All of them are produced from false thinking too. Even whether one has an attractive or an ugly face is brought about from false thinking, you will undergo the corresponding retribution for whatever false thought you have. For that reason, everything is falsely produced and falsely destroyed. The worlds are different because thinking differs, can all through the sameness be entered. With universal worthy Bodhisattva's wisdom of sameness, there can be entry into the worlds, all of which are different because living beings' thoughts are different. Each of and every single set of vision can be entered by the meatless eye organs. Universal worthy Bodhisattva also knows the meekless states of vision with their various kinds of natures which are different, the meekless and inevitably many, more than words could describe. Yet what is seen does not have any difference and is furthermore not jumbled or confused, is all seen as the same. Yet it's not the same, nor is it jumbled or mixed up. In each according to individual karma, the corresponding retribution is undergone. 
Every kind of state is brought about from one's own karma, and so people bring calamities down upon themselves or else create their own blessings as they give rise to delusions, create karma and undergo retribution. Universal worthy Bodhisattva with limitless power completely knows them all in detail, and each and every single state of vision through great wisdom can totally be entered and known, along with all states of of ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. In that way, all in the various world systems can totally be known in detail. What is more, in cultivation of each and every conduct of universal worthy bodhisattva, there is also never any retreat. There never will be any turning back from it. The states of speaking of Buddhas and speaking of living beings, as well as speaking of all countries, and speaking that way in the three periods of time, in their differences can totally be known. The future present in the past, the present present in the future. In the past, the future can appear, and in the future, the past can appear. The past and future can both manifest the present. And the present and future can reveal the past. All three periods of time are reciprocally seen. They can change into each other. Yet every single one of them is clear. All of those individual states states can be clearly understood using the wisdom of universal worthy Bodhisattva. In that way, there are limitless kinds. Why are there so many changes and transformations? It is to enlighten those in the world, to bring all living beings in all worlds to open enlightenment. However, there's something unusual about living beings. They say, "So you want me to get enlightened? Well, I'm simply not going to get enlightened. You tell me to cultivate? Well, I'm not going to cultivate. That's why it is said, there are paths to hell, halls of heaven, but nobody walks them. The hell have no door, but beings bore their way in." That's how beautiful living beings are. The skillful experience of own wisdom have no boundaries which can be obtained. You can search for some boundaries to the expedient methods of the wisdom of own wisdom of universal worthy Bodhisattva, but you won't be able to find any such boundaries. Their boundaries ultimately cannot be obtained. They basically have no bounds, so where could you go to seek them? Ultimately, they cannot be guarded.